now dowsing, map dowsing over Lake Titicaca just to check if what looks like the plume serpent or a line that kind of follows the path of Viracocha does go through the length of the island. And uh, I did some dowsing here back in 2007. And Chris is just checking if he can find anything um, corresponds to what I found, although I've not actually told him exactly what I found. So um, he's doing it kind of blind, um, just with the, um, the map dowsing for now, until we get there to explore it and dowse it ourselves. Rock, isn't it? You can see the, see it shimmering. Sandstone. Is this sandstone? Yeah. Classic sandstone. Yeah, it's a real quartz aronite. It's a real. It's quartz. almost like this is like the omphalli or the axis mundi of the whole kind of one of them. Like this goes obviously the other one. Uh -huh. This is like the one you know the center of the ancient well before even Cusco was built possibly. And it's got this sort of energy here as well, which kind of matches that. Well, and then also the andesite too, the little ones. Yeah. Oh, my point. So it's been placed here, but I, I think they placed it here because, you know, the energy maybe. You know, and I think, yeah. they were, I think they were marking this particular this this area here, yeah, this rock well. of the cat. But the origin of the Incas is here. Mm -hmm. That's very important. That's why the Incas consider this place a very sacred place. Yeah. They will sail from Puno every year and they will go to the southern part first where the Sun Temple is and they need to be uh, ready to enter into a sacred island. They need to purify themselves. So it seems they will have different kinds of baths with the water from the sacred uh, fountain and then you're yeah, able to enter the make, island yeah, and do the Inca trail and, and up here, yeah, the northern part, well. because of the Puma yes. rock. <laughs> the Puma rock that you see right across it was a very important for them yeah. because the legend says that the Inca Viracocha were upset with the, with the Puma because it was after the moon and he turned the Inca, the, the Puma into a rock. The mm. name of the lake Titicaca, it comes from two Aymara words, Titi, Kala. Titi, it's a Puma, Kala means a rock or a stone, the Puma rock. Mm. See? But isn't there also a story of it being a rabbit too? The so rabbit, yeah. I mean, the actual shape of the lake is a is, rabbit. Is the rabbit, yes. And then you can see the cat. They also they call the cat, and that's the connection as well. Mm -hmm. So the uh, the puma. So the puma, this giant puma, was trying to swallow the moon. Swallow the moon, yes. And then and the Inca turned look, him into this rock. Right? If, you, if you take a look, the the yellow part is the the mouth open. So you ba basically facing a puma on the side, oh. just the side part oh. of the puma, and the left part is the moon. See the round left part is the moon. And this is a puma. This legend. The side of a puma face. Yes. Yeah, the side of a puma, and a puma was swallowing the moon. And the Inca Viracocha, who, who was an Inca, he turned the, he stopped it, and he turned the puma into a rock. But it's like I think it's hard to see. But he's saying that's the ear, that's the eye. The moon is on the left side. It's just the side of a puma, and that's the eye. But this big yellow area is the mouth of the puma. Mm. Oh. It's hard to see, I think, uh, but I, I get what you're saying, yeah. you know. So, uh, and so that's, that's why this is a sacred place, because this is where the puma was stopped mm -hmm. from swallowing the moon. Right. Uh, basically, here's a large sandstone that runs, red sandstone that runs all the way over here and goes over there. You can see the bedding plane in there like that. It's tilted drastically. And if you follow the line over here, you lose it. The sandstone is down to a very thin interval. And there's also a discontinuity running through there where there's a little tiny valley. And I think that might be a fault that's, that drops one of these blocks up or down relative to the other. So with the discontinuity is where two types of geology meet? Correct. And there's, there've been reports and studies done on strips of eliminite either side of this rock of the cat. 
would that cause any effect or would that have any meaning? Uh, well, limonite is an iron rich mineral and that's what's causing this the sandstone to be red is all the iron in here and it's probably just a concentration of it. Yeah, that's kind of what, and you, it would, it what would, Susan said and what Robert Shock said. Yeah, and as far as magnetism go, the the, the uh, limonite would be the least magnetic of, of limonite, hematite, magnetite. Magnetite being the strongest magnetism. So. so that over here, Adrian pointed out that there's like a discontinuity down there where two types of geology meet, which in, in itself, the telluric currents would have an effect um, because when they, because you get different types of magnetism within the geology, don't you? Different types oh, of rock see, yeah. that could cause a drop in magnetism, and actually, or, or drop in electric charge, and create, you know, energy effects. Right, and you can see the red sandstone right there. It's much smaller. That red knob. Oh yeah. On, on the other side, so it's either drop down or, or this is drop down. But if it's dropped down, then the rest of this red sandstone is underneath. So we're here on the. Um, under the sun and here we see quite a lot of stats there. Can you give us a bit of background? Uh, it all seems to be a, a quartz sandstone. It's very high quartz content. Some of it, as you can see over here, the white, then in the center it appears to be oxidized with a bit of limonite, giving it that uh, orangish look as opposed to being reduced, which will give you the red look. It's very orange and you can see a lot of interesting diagenetic features as you're walking up the pathway. And you can see on the other side of it, it's a white again. So something came up through here in the way of fluids that changed this, that oxidized it. Okay, great. And, and uh, having a fault line going across here, do you think that would cause any kind of effect mixed with the lemonite and the sandstone? I'm not sure where the fault line would be, but definitely something brought the fluids up to change this to the uh, yellowish color, the orangish color, as opposed to the real white sandstones. So it could be an offshoot off of that fault that brought fluids up and has oxidized it. Okay, so I'm going to film Brian filming. And I'm filming David Hatcher Childress dowsing, and it worked. This is the most powerful spot in the whole world, right there. I'm sure of it. Are you sure? I'm totally sure. Ah. Doused across it at about 150 meters wide and had about, I counted about 70 bands through it. And it's coming right through here. The edge of it's just over here somewhere. Uh -huh. um, it's coming right through here and I the other side of it is three, the other side of this hill, degrees. your frog. And in fact, those cairns on the hill there mark the edge of it, so somebody's already marked it. Ah. And there's a, so that, I think this is the big, the big Viracocha energy that goes right through this island and right up, right up through uh, southern Peru. Ah. That, is, that is the same, well, that is the same yeah. as the plume serpent, really. It is the plume serpent. <coughs> but then we've got crossing energies, there's, uh, there's a, a yin energy, which is, uh, what do we measure, about 50 meters across here, um, and it's coming through here. So where it crosses particularly strong bands, they put these, this is a, a strong spot, but these little medicine wheels they put on intersections of, of uh, intersecting bands within, within the two energy lines. And there's another one, which is about the same width, just over the hill there where that lady's sitting, but there's another one about the same width. Uh, which crosses at the same angle, about 60 degrees, in that direction. So you've got the two, the two major energy currents really seem to be roughly in that direction and that direction through Peru. And all the, the map dowsing stuff we've done, it sort of suggests it's the same sort of grid pattern. Because oh. many of us, including yeah. myself, have found a Would kind you of thinner down? line going through here, yeah. through the. Yeah, the yeah, effigy. yeah. No, well, it's that, that'll be right. That's there's that, that's there's what a I, number of them. There's, there's several of them. That's what this I originally thought. Was, I originally thought that was the Michael energy line, potentially, if yeah. it is a global current. Well, it is. It is. Uh, that's a positive line, and this is a negative line. So this is the uh, the feminine equivalent. That's probably why this is so, so strong here, because we've got a crossing of male and female. Yeah. Whereas there, you've got a male-male crossing. Yeah. Well, well, the island, island of the moon. There, I don't know. The island of the moon is next. So that nice. might be yeah, so probably feminine. We were saying it's maybe we'll get a lot of yin energy. Yeah. Well, it's very feminine feeling, even if you weren't told that yeah. that's where the the um, 
versions of the sun were. Yeah. Um, it is, you know, anyone who with any sensitivity can feel that when you're there. Because I, I basically, I mean, I'm, maybe as well, I want you to check it. I originally I got the Michael Energy Line up here on the southern part of the island, near where we're going to go. Yeah. Is the Mary Energy Current? Well, it's interesting that the, the exact, the, if you do an exact straight alignment, put it all the way around the world, it goes right yeah. through the centre of the island of the sun. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> but it, it doesn't. I mean, the Michael and Mary lines could just be. A parallel line to the main line that comes through there, and maybe the line through Britain is much bigger than yeah. Michael and Mary. That's but funny. That's what Robert Coon says as well. Yeah. He says like a beam, like a seven beam miles thing, wide. Yeah. And it, you know, it's not just one line. There's just there's multiple lines, thousands of them, and they're all sort of parallel to each other. And every big line has got multiple small lines with it. So people pick up a little intersection of two little lines and say, "Eureka, that's it." But you know, it, it, it's it's not. It's just a one a small thousand, part of it, one of thousands, one thousand millions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. So yeah, it's, it's trying to get this mindset that the, the, bigger the energies picture. are really big. Yeah, yeah. get a bigger picture here, yeah. yeah. Rather yeah. Than sort of the ocean yeah. on the raft of serpents. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's exactly what perfect. an energy current does. And the <laughs> serpents are the, are the, are the beams <coughs> within it, the bands within it. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. It's, yeah. it's absolutely it's true. Verkosha yeah. did it's not only did came out of the ocean, still is coming out of the ocean. No, I, I, be I believe it came out of the ocean in a certain direction where these lines go and like continued along the path of the yeah. on his raft, partly on his raft, so partly, you know, as a pilgrimage route yeah. building yeah. these sites. Also went the other way as well to go to Tiwanaku yeah. and mm -hmm. further south. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, the I mean, they supposedly emerged from this cave over here. Right, right. But it seemed like if they were really real people walking, you know, coming here, <laughs> It seems they would have come from the south because they were going to Cusco. Yeah. So they weren't coming from Cusco. Well, so they must, in theory, they were coming. And that's what I was saying, the Irish Jim Incas. Jim area. Well, or, or again, the Irish Incas story, where they're coming up the Rio La Plata, they're coming up Paraguay, and then they come, and then they've reached Lake Titicaca. But ultimately, they're going to Cusco. I mean, yeah. you know, that's well, hilarious. But they could have gone in both directions and right. from here. Well, well, from here they went. And in fact, he just told a story that Manco Capac threw his sword to Cusco. To Cusco. All right. Okay, and then that's why Cusco became the capital because yeah, he threw his sword from here to there. But he was—he hadn't been there yet. No. Uh, you know, he—it it was new. It was a new place to him. Right? That's, that's similar to like uh, you get English legends like that where the giants throw the stones Throws, and it marks the or spot like the devil's where they arrows and Yeah, stuff. it's right. very similar. See the bedding plane in the sandstone right there. It's like this, and 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 it's running long ways, that's called strike in that direction. Okay. Over here, the bedding plane is like this, and the strike is like that. Okay. Which means the strike and dips on this side are different from the strike and dips of that side, which means there probably is a fault between here and there. And so it's probably between running in that kind of topographic depression. So, there's, so the fault line does run right through the rock of the cat. Potentially, which is there. It would run along the edge of it, maybe. Yeah, that's Around where they're standing there and, and through that depression. And it goes up to um, the uh, Chincana ruins. Yeah, that's, that would, yeah, yeah. Could be. And this is full of joints. It's all broken up. So, see, if you look down here, it's there's fractures. And Did you hear that, Chris? There's like a fault line going across here. Oh, I'm just dowsing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool, cool. But, and the interesting thing is the energy is. Um, it's quite wide, but it's quite different to the other energies. It's a series of bands of uh, yin and yang energy, and they're both about five or six meters wide, and it's just going right through here. We picked it up uh, down where, where those buildings were. So it's, it's coming through here at about 60 degrees, and it could well be associated with a, with a fault, but it's a totally different energy to what we're experiencing up there. A fault energy is... Yeah, it's got a different feel, and it's most unusual. You got so you got these bands next to each other. You probably run out of it just down there somewhere. Great. But wherever you see these little things on the rocks here, they're all markers oh. of, of what people have picked up with the energy. Just intuitive. Well, no, they've doused it, or felt it, or you yeah. know, shaman. Of, yeah. Joanna's just noticed a very nicely cut it's, it's corner here. It's just beautiful. Here. And uh, apparently, Brian, 
other people say that these stones do come from Copacabana. They were brought over here. They weren't necessarily from this island itself. <laughs> 